Um, we are very excited to have um, Marco coming to preach. There's, there's, talk about miracles in motion. I think we're ready to go. Father in heaven, bless this word unto your name. Bless Marco and to your service. In Jesus' name. Yeah, come on. Church. Hello, everybody. Uh, happy Easter in October. As you, as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing my uh, resurrection shirt, my stone rolled away uh, t-shirt today. And to be honest, uh, a few more stones could roll away, but <laughs> Stephen, Stephen, I need your help, buddy. Stephen, Peer Fitness Group. Okay. Um, Right. Next slide, please. Fantastic. Acts 1-3. We're going we're gonna to look at Easter. We're going to look at the resurrection today. Even though it's October, this is an all-year-round event. And uh, this is right after Jesus has rose, risen from the dead. In the book of Acts, um, it says this, Acts 1-3. After his suffering, talking about Jesus and what, all that he'd been through, he presented himself to them, talking about the apostles, the disciples, all those who had been following him. He presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. Sometimes we think... Proof and Christianity are two opposites. Oh, no, you, you, we, it's all faith. It's all faith. It's all just, just uh, hope, cross your fingers, hope so, maybe so. No, that's not true. God has given good reasons. It says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. It's really hard to love God with your mind if you're thinking, I don't know about this stuff, man. I don't know. Hey, did anyone come from a skeptical background? Because I did. Alan did. Anybody else come from a skeptical background? Yeah, Ian, you know, a, lot of, a lot of you guys. A lot, Joseph over there, yeah. Um, and uh, there, that we needed some things to get us over the finish line. We needed, and there's nothing wrong with that. Even Thomas, one of the disciples, Sometimes they give him a, a bad rap, old Thomas, like doubting Thomas. Unless I see the nail prints and, and the spear in his side, unless I, I won't believe. Okay, and then the Lord appears to him, okay, and, and, uh, and he falls before Jesus and said, my Lord and my God. And that's where the Lord would like to take us all to. Uh, he want, and some, some people, I think, need to get over the finish line. And looking at some of the evidences and proofs. Let me, and, and in Hebrews, it gives a great, if this, is, this is the definition of faith. It doesn't exclude proof. Look at it, what it says. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance. Substance. Substantial. Stuff you can pick, poke your fingers at of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Here on the podium, I have something that is evidence of things unseen. Do you see this? Everybody, what is this? Thank you, You're, thank you, thank you. Yes, it is a pencil. This pencil is absolute proof of something you have never seen before. I know you don't believe me, as I know some of you might be skeptical, but this pencil, it's absolute proof that somewhere out there, 
there is a pencil maker. Now, I know some, I, I don't believe in the pencil maker, man, because I have not seen the pencil maker with my own eyes. But seriously, all of you are smart enough to learn how to make pencils. You could go to Pencil Making University, that's in Pennsylvania, and you could uh, <laughs> learn how to make, uh, but, but, uh, but somewhere out there, all of you believe that there's somebody out there in a factory someplace who made this pencil. Even though you haven't seen the pencil maker with your own eyes. Next slide, please. Oh, yes. I'm going to need your help as we conduct an inv investigation. How is your singing voices this morning? I was like, oh, my. <laughs> You'll be fine. Okay. We're going to do a supernatural investigation. Um, I don't know if you, anybody remembers that show from the 90s. This says how old this material is. I used to travel around with a fellow named Rod. We were a Christian drama group. We went around to schools all over the UK. And we used, we tried to connect with the culture of the day. And in the culture of the day, we took pick things from pop culture at the time. And there was a supernatural kind of spooky show called The X-Files back in the day. And they would go around investigating supernatural type things. Well, we're going to do something like that. So I need you to sing with me, okay? I want to say, the truth is out here. The, the, there is no need to fear. Trust in just one. Open up a file on God the Son. You guys kept getting better and better as we went along. And at first it was... <laughs> Try it one more time. Everybody really give it some welly, as they say. The truth is out here. There is no need to fear. Trust in just one. Open up a file on God the Son. Fantastic. We're going to do this investigation right now. I'm going to actually, I'm not going to lip sync, but I'm going to talk along with my 30-year-old recording of this. Uh, I mean, it was, uh, it was 30 years ago we recorded this material, and I'm going to talk along with myself. Hopefully I get the phrasing right. We'll, 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 we'll start try there. Okay, go ahead. Tell you, turn, turn that up there. The Axe Files. Thank you, Clara. Oh, turn it up. Turn it up. Ooh. Mysterious. I'm Fox Mulderius, Roman Bureau of, of Investigation. investigation. Dana Scaligula and I study every supernatural sensation. We had just solved the case of a man who could fly like an eagle. He did nothing of the sort. He was just smoking something illegal. So we had just finished our report and had just sat down to dine when a message came from headquarters saying, Get to Palestine. Something about the resurrection of the dead. So they needed to call in the Fed. Hard to believe. Caligula said, said someone's, someone's completely, completely off their head. Everybody hey. sing with me. The truth is out here. There's no need to fear. Trust in just one. Open up a file on God the Son. Craig, I can see you back there. Have you noticed that you and I go to the same beauty parlor? Yeah. We arrived in Jerusalem and got, and got briefed on the strange case. case. It, seemed it seems a Jewish, Jewish preacher had done miracles all over the place. place. On, on the grounds of blasphemy, before several courts he was tried, because, because he claimed to be God, he was whipped and crucified. And crucified. Roman Professional soldier. Roman executioners <laughs> made sure he <laughs> truly died. died. Post-mortem blood and water flowed when they when thrust, thrust a spear into his side. side. He was, he was taken, taken to a rich, a rich man's, man's tomb. tomb. A boulder, a boulder shoved the tomb tight. tight. But this is but this why it's a mystery. mystery. 
Oh, Three yeah, days later, he was, he out, was out of sight. Everybody. The truth is out here. detail in the New Testament. Everybody. There's no need to fear. Trust in just one. Open up a file on God the Son. I have come to the conclusion well, let's, that let's there is no end right there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, next, next slide, please. Thank you very much. All these books, every single one was written by someone who was hostile. Hostile to the Christian faith. Hostile, said, I can disprove the, the whole thing in a weekend. Let's look at some of these guys. Simone Greenleaf, do you know who that guy was? He started Harvard Law School. He was an expert lawyer. He was an agnostic, didn't believe any of this stuff. Um, and uh, he wrote the te you know he wrote these great volumes on what is allowed in court for evidence, and uh, that was the basis of Harvard Law School. In fact, they have a building dedicated there to him to this day. Anyway, his students said, uh, "Why don't you use your evidence books, those books that you wrote? Why don't you use those and examine the Christian faith?" And he ended up writing the testimony of the four evangelists. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, this guy was a detective, cold case Christianity. Um, J. Werner Wallace, looking at how they, detectives, how detectives open up old cases and uh, examine evidence. Um, Lee Strobel, skeptical journalist at the Chicago Tribune. His wife became a Christian, and he said uh, he was thinking divorce. He was a devout atheist, didn't believe any of this stuff. He thought, I'm going to dismantle this stuff. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my, my skills as a reporter, ask questions. I'm going to debunk this whole thing. Ended up uh, a whole year investigating, asking questions. And uh, he ended up writing a book, becoming a Christian and writing the book, The Case for Christ. Josh McDowell, same thing. I hate this stuff. I don't believe it. I'm going to disprove it. He ended up writing the book, Evidence That Demands a Verdict. Frank Morrison, English uh, journalist, another journalist there. Um, again, he thought, oh, the Christian story is nice. Jesus teaches a lot of nice things. The miracles are kind of fairy tale-ish. And all oh, that resurrection thing spoils it all. Spoils it. Jesus has been teaching nice things, be nice to each other, love each other. And then it comes up with this fairy tale of uh, rising from the dead. I don't believe it. Again, investigating, looking at the details and coming to faith in Christ. And there are many, many more people who did just that. Well, um, let's uh, go to the next slide, please. Yeah. Um, one of the details, oops, one of the details that you need to, is that they tried to make this tomb of Christ so difficult to have a resurrection. Because there was rumors of a resurrection. The disciples said he was going to rise from the dead. So, says, uh, so and, the, and the authorities, Pilate, in the Roman side of things, the, the Jewish priests, all gonna throw, these guys, the, the disciples, are, they're, they're up to something. 
They've been caused a lot of trouble and a lot of mischief. We already had to crucify him. We're, gonna, it's not, we're not gonna let this, any miracle happen. And so let's read this, Matthew 27, 62. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and Pharisees went to Pilate, uh, who's the Roman governor of the day. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he had been raised from the dead. The last deception will be worse than the first. Take a, then Pilate says, take a guard. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and make the tomb secure by putting a seal of stone and posting the guard. Now, in English, we kind of think we read the word a guard. You think uh, one guy is what, what comes to our mind. They're gonna post a guard. No, this was not a Chuckle Brothers operation. This, uh, this was not, the, when they say guard, the, the, the Greek and Latin word there is the custodia. That where we get the word custodian, where we get the word custody. The custodia, take a guard, take a, the custodia. Now, if we said, if I, 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 let me give you a word that might conjure up what uh, this kind of word uh, really struck in the people's minds when they said this word, take a guard. If I said, take the Gestapo. Remember the Gestapo, the Nazi secret police. You say the word Gestapo, oh, ooh, ooh, scary. Those guys are ruthless. Those guys are mean, nasty, horrible, uh, efficient terribly efficient and uh, so when they said take a guard they're taking the custodia they're talking like the 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 Roman equivalent of the, the Gestapo the secret the the Roman guards trail trained if they um, lose their weapon or if they fall asleep at their post they get killed there's all the motivation in the world for staying awake and doing a good job um, Next slide, please. Thank you very much. So this, yeah. So there were, the, most people believe there were about 16, at least eight, because uh, they would have had uh, at least, uh, the, the, the least, least one, I don't, and I don't think they would have had just four because they have replacements. They'd have uh, guards standing around, making sure everything was sealed, secure. They have to check in the tomb, make sure the body's there. They have to put Rome seal. If you break Rome seal, that's bad news. Okay, so they have the Rome seal there. You have these guards, there could have been up, uh, most people believe there were up to 16 guards with replacements standing around there. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. And um, let's read this. Matthew 28, one, after the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. His cards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking here for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, he has risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. We're going to act that out, folks. We're going to act that out, and, and this has not been rehearsed, but I'm going to bring up some actors who have never rehearsed this before. Um, uh, Michael, Michael, Michael Fisher. Could you give a big hand to Michael Fisher? And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bring up my personal fitness instructor, Mr. Stephen, Stephen Payton. Give Stephen a hand. Give Stephen a hand. Now, um, I'm going to wear this one. You guys can fight over the, someone, so I'm sorry, one of you is going to have to be the glam, glam Roman gr 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 soldier. Okay, there we go. Okay, now. Scary? Scary? Okay, come on, come on over here, guys. Okay, now. Uh, could you stand on either side of me? Stand on either side of me. Thank you very much. Can we all see us? Okay, 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 right, okay. Roman soldiers. So, 
<laughs> so, um, and you're and you're hiding your face. That's a, you, you, that's what you that's what you wanted. Okay, thank you. Uh, but is this not just for them? It's for us as well. Um, I, could you all raise your hands in the air? Okay, and could you sway them back and forth? And I want you to shout and say, "Boom! Shake, shake, shake the tomb! Boom! Shake, shake, shake the tomb!" Boom, shake, shake, shake the tomb. Roll, 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 kaboom. Let's try that again. Boom, shake, shake, shake the tomb. Boom, shake, shake, shake the tomb. Boom, shake, shake, shake the tomb. Roll, 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 kaboom. Fantastic, fantastic. Now, some drama lessons, guys. Just listen while I give these guys some drama lessons. Okay, no, no standing still. No, it's bouncing, bouncing. And then we lead, we lead, the bouncing, that's it, bouncing. The whole time, and when we lead, the boom shake the tomb, it's the hands of that big well, yeah, yeah. But then I'm gonna be talking to you and asking you questions, so guys look confused, okay? Look, okay, so go, what, the, what are you talking about? There we go. Fantastic, give him another hand. Now this time I'm not gonna be singing along with myself, I'm gonna be singing about with my old partner, Rod. Um, so let's just, just play it. We're going to do this rap here. Okay, here we go. Start bouncing. It's really loud, really loud. <laughs> Come on. Tell it like it was. Yo, back up. Keep away from the tomb. I'm a Roman soldier. Gotta get out of the sound room. Me and the sword. Protect the GC. If they're going to steal a body, they ain't going to come through me. Say it were wonders. Say it was a spice. Me and the boys is going to make sure there's no ice. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Stephen. That'll get us in shape. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Next slide, please. But the resurrection is not just about Jesus rising from the dead. That's what, that's, I mean, Christianity doesn't work unless he rose from the dead. In fact, the gospel, the, the apostle Paul throws down the gauntlet to all skeptics right in the book of 1 Corinthians. He says, if Christ has not been raised from the dead, we have nothing to believe in. Our faith is in vain. It is useless. We should go home. This is a waste of time. Every church out there in the whole world is a waste of time if Jesus died and stayed dead. However, rising from the dead is, and, and giving us all this evidence that he really did, 
is not only evidence of his resurrection, it's evidence of the promised resurrection he's promised to give you. Because he not only died for us, he was raised for us. Back in the Old Testament, there's a blink and you'll miss it feast. We don't understand the Jewish uh, feasts because we don't celebrate the Jewish feasts as such. Wonderful things the Jewish feasts were. So many insights into really that most of them, well, all of them point to Jesus in one way or another. Um, before, the free, before this uh, uh, feast, the Feast of First Fruits, was Passover. What was going on? Uh, what, what, uh, let me put it this way. How many people knew that the Last Supper, that Last Supper that, he, that Jesus shared with his disciples was actually during the Jewish Feast of Passover? Remember, did, did anyone know that? Wonderful, wonderful, because, you know, that's, the symbolism is so rich there. The blood of the lamb on the doorpost so that the angel of death will pass over. Um, and then Jesus dies during the Passover festival, the next day after the Last Supper. Well, this is an interesting feast because it foreshadows what was to happen to us. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, when you enter the land, I'm going to give you the reap its harvest. Bring to the priest a sheaf of the first grain that you harvest. Bring the And he is to wave the sheaf before the Lord. So it will be accepted on your behalf. The priest is to wave it on when? This is important. The day after the Sabbath. What is the Sabbath? According to the Jews, what day of the week is the Sabbath? Saturday. So the day after the Sabbath is? Today, Sunday. Hmm, interesting detail. First day of the week. And so we'll be accepted on your behalf. The priest says to wave on the day after the Sabbath. On the day you wave the sheaf, you must sacrifice as a burnt offering to the Lord a lamb, a year old, without defect. Now, next slide, please. The Apostle Paul uses that word from the, from the feast that every, all the Jews were familiar with. Look at this. He says, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. You see, you wave this before the priest, this, this, uh, she, this wheat here, and they're expecting a harvest of other wheat. Jesus is the first fruits. You're the harvest. You're, you're all the field. You're the, you're the wheat growing up that he's come to harvest for himself. Isn't that wonderful? First fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ, the first fruits, that when he comes, those who belong to him. One more slide, please. John, and you remember this at the Last Supper. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and it dies, talking about himself, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Hello, many seeds. Next slide, please. The resurrection is the ultimate ghostbuster. You see that 40 days. Not that, the, we, not that we, we have a spirit. Yes, we have a, when we die, our spirit goes to heaven, goes immediately to be in the presence of the Lord. But the ultimate... Uh, Right now, each of you sitting looking at me has a spirit inside this uh, shell casing, this body. And, um, and people wonder what heaven is going to be like. This, uh, this, they have, uh, you know, we have cartoon ideas floating on clouds, dressed in bathrobes, playing harps, cartoons. That's what we, we have in our heads. Can't be, it doesn't sound exciting. And we wonder what, 
we're going to, if I'm going to be there, what am I going to look like? What am I going to be like? Well, Jesus, the first fruits of the resurrection showed us what we'll be like because they recognized him. They said, it's Jesus. And he gave them, and if you read the resurrection accounts, a lot of eating going on. A lot of eating going on. Every time he's uh, having a meal with them. Because he's saying, look. Because they're all wondering, you know, the first time they see him, they, is, is, is this uh, Casper? Are you, are you a, 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 a ghost? Is it what they're thinking? And he goes, no, it's me. And he proved, and that's why the many convincing proofs that he's alive, that he's got a glorified body. What kind of body will you have? A glorified body like Christ. He showed us a glimpse of what is to come, what you will be like, the resurrection. And yes, just like now, well, your spirit is, is contained in that body you have right now. Well, that's how it's going to be in eternity. The two will get put together back eventually in his timing. In his timing, spirit, body, come back together, a glorified physical body. That's what is in store for us, the first fruits of all creation. Let's pray, everybody. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you that uh, all that you did for us, the amazing fact that you rose from the dead, that is a, a miracle we can poke our fingers at, look to go do a CSI investigation, look at the evidence for ourselves, evidence that's bowled over many a skeptic, many a critic, and that's also proof of our coming resurrection. Thank you for that great hope that we have. Lord, thank you for dying for us on the cross, but that would not be complete unless you were raised for us as well. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for being raised for us. In Jesus' precious name, if, thank, you can look up. If there's anybody here who has not given their lives to Christ or needs evidence to get you over the finish line, come talk to us. Come talk to Pastor Aaron. Come talk to Alan. Uh, we'd love to sit and pray with you, talk about these things. Uh, it's good to help you in your ongoing investigation. Wonderful. I'm going to hand it back over to Aaron and, and Alan. Alan. God bless.